Hello, well in this film I'm going to be making a clicker die and by clicker die I mean one of these. They're like cookie cutters and I use them for cutting out leather shapes. So, so far I've just made the one which is this one and this one is used for doing zip inserts and today I'm going to be doing one for the base of a bag. And actually I'll just show you, I mean this is one of my bucket bags and inside it has a zipped pocket for valuables etc. There you are and that zip recess there it's a bit fiddly to cut by hand so that's where this one comes in. I use it with my leather press and it cuts out the long oblong sort of section for the zip there. So that's how that works and what I want to do is actually make a clicker die which will cut out the round base for one of these bags. So at the moment that's the base. It's a calf leather. I use a, a, a template and I draw around it and then cut around it. But I thought it would be lovely if I could make a clicker die. It would be quicker obviously and more accurate as well or easier to make more accurate. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll show you how I go about it. So the blade of the clicker cutter is um, steel, flat steel and you need to bend it around to shape. And it's very very sharp on this top edge. So I'll show you what it looks like. That's how it comes. So it's like a long steel strip about a meter long just under. And the way it's constructed it's quite clever really. You can get different types, different thicknesses. This one it's, it's very sharp on its triangular point here on the edge, on the cutting edge. It's, this one's made specifically for leather so it's quite a, a strong point. You can get them for cardboard as well and paper and they have slightly different bevel angles. But this one's for leather. The top edge is hardened so that is something like I don't know 56 Rockwell. It's hard and the lower edge here is also quite hard but the middle is relatively soft. It's still quite hard <laughs> but it is softer and what that means is two things. You can bend it well far more easily and also you can put holes in it as well with a bit of effort but it's quite possible. Now the bending, I researched this for quite a long time and you can buy special um, manual bending rip jigs but they are terribly expensive. Obviously nowadays a lot of this stuff's done on computer and computers do the bending as well as the forming but um, I looked around for a nice second hand setup and it was going to cost, well it was out of my what I wanted to spend on it. So, <laughs> typical me, I found a substitute and what I'm using is a ring mill or a ring well, bending jig, a ring bending jig I should say and it comes as a bit of a set so you get these heads, I'll show them in use in a minute, which have different shapes so you've got squares, rounds etc here, quite a selection of different shapes and you put them into this ring bending tool which I've mounted on a block of wood so I can clamp it to my workbench and you pull the lever and you force the two bits of the die together to bend the metal strip. So it works very much like one of the old manual steel die benders but of course it's far far cheaper. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm not doing very many of these but I thought well if I get one of these ring benders I can have a go at forming a few and that's actually how I did this one. And then the other thing I do when I've done the bending I need to join the metal obviously I just use my little MIG welder and put a little weld on to join the two bits of the metal together. So it's all a bit sort of crude but it does work and I mean this one's been quite successful so I thought right time to make a curved one. This bending may be a bit of a disaster I haven't done Apart from this one I haven't done any actual bending or things like curves or anything like that but we'll see how it goes. Now the curves I want to bend for this one have quite a good radius so I'm going to go with the largest of these little bending sets. So it's like a male and a female head here and they clip into the ring bending tool. Now I did wonder when I got one of these if I was perhaps pushing my luck 
getting such a small thing for bending the steel strip, but I think I think it will work okay. This particular one, if you're in the UK, is made by Durston, D-U-R-S-T-O-N. I think in the States, um, Pepe is a brand that comes up quite a lot, so you can get, get those ones. You have to be very careful with this steel rule die because it is sharp. So you could wear gloves, but just make sure that you keep your work surface totally tidy and clear and that no one else is around who could get injured. So obviously you've got this metal strip going around. So what I'm gonna do is try a little bit of a bend. I'm gonna do it down one end, because I'm gonna be quite restricted on my space here as I do this. I think if I do it from this end, it'd be easier actually. And I'm just taking a bit of a guesstimate as to where to have that corner. So it's not critical, I just want to get the, the bend in roughly the right sort of place to get the join on a straight piece. So all you do with this, you just push at the lever. And as you push, make sure that the steel strip is flat on the tool. Push and you'll get a bend forming. And you can keep doing that as you go around to get a bit of a gentle curve. And this is all a bit of, so I'm just doing bend, bend, bend. So doing gentle bends, just seeing how it goes. What you wanna do is obviously get your bend to match up, in this case, to my paper pattern. That's looking okay-ish. I'll keep going. I'm sure this is not going to be as easy as this and it's all going to go horribly wrong. <laughs> it is quite important with this strip to make sure you're keeping it flat otherwise you get a sort of like an up bend happening. So again I'll keep checking this against my paper pattern I think that's going okay actually. Let's just zoom into the head. I'll give you a slightly closer view. I'm not putting a huge amount of pressure on this actually. curve. It's not looking too bad. I think I need a bit more bend in there to bring that up a bit. It's a bit of, to be honest, it's guesswork. So whether I'm going to get four curves that will sort of match up, I don't know. beginning to look quite good. So that's my first bend done. It took a bit of correcting and struggling. I haven't got it perfect perfect but I think that's actually pretty good. I'm fairly happy with that. Um, yeah just take it I think just take it carefully slowly bend 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 if you get it wrong as long as you don't put a really sharp bend in you can sort of unbend it and rebend it and just keep checking it against your template but that seems to have done quite a reasonable curve there. So my next little challenge will be to get the other bends in and to actually make sure that they come at the right stage. Because in a way, your first bend's the easy one because you've just got to do a bend. After that, you've got to make sure your next bend starts and finishes at the right points in your curve so that everything matches up okay. So I'll carry on, I'll do this bend next and see how we get on there. And again, it's the same principle, so I want it to be straight up to there. Pop this on the bending jig, keep it down flat and start putting little bends in. And one's better, I think, not putting too much of a bend in at first. I'm just going along and giving it a little nibble 
as I go along. Impressed by this little bending jig. It's managing it. I don't feel I'm overstressing it. Okay, now go along and check this periodically against my template to see how I'm going. So I want more bend in there at the moment. I can see that the more you do this, the more you would begin to get a feel for what was a required bend. At the moment, I'm a bit fishing in the dark. Actually, that's looking quite nice. Yeah. I'll just give you a closer view of the actual jig itself. I'm now doing the third bend. And each time I'm just bending this strip a little bit, not a huge amount. And then I find if it's a fairly gentle bend, if I've made a mistake and get it so horribly wrong, I can sort of unbend it and rebend it. There's no doubt about it, this little tool is definitely up to the job. It's not straining it too much, so it is a lot cheaper than getting a proper professional bending machine that would, would cost a lot, and as I wouldn't use it that often. It would be a bit of a false economy, I think. So again, I'm going off a bit, but I will Give that a bit more bend there. You end up sort of having to do a little bit of manual bending to tease it round. It's quite good to these. The heads on the machine, just while I got it close in, you see, they come out like that. And then if you wanted to say do a 90 degree bend, which is what I did for the zip insert, you change your heads around. It's quite nicely machined up this one. You can probably see there, so I've got a scrap of off cut I will show you. So there you are have that and you can just bend it through. In fact it does take more more pressure to get a, a 90 degree and what I've actually been doing for the 90 degrees is slightly over bending them so I take the 90 degree one out, get these matched up and put this one in which is a more cute angle just to like over and then check it and bend it back. What one can then do is put a little tri-square on just to check if one's at 90 degrees. Which I think that's pretty close. Very well, that's a 90 degree bend. Anyway, I will carry on doing my curves. To cut the steel rule die, I use um, aviation snips. So these are quite suitable for this. It's quite hard to start the cut. But once it gets going, there we are. So I'm going to carry on doing the bending. I'm now doing the final corner bend. And really with this it's just a matter of doing lots of little bends and then checking it every now and again that it's going about right. If you don't do anything too sharp, it's if you do a sharp bend that you'll hit problems because it will be rather permanent. So I'm just doing lots of little gentle bends and then trying against my cardboard or paper template. If it's 
it's not going quite enough, which is not quite enough there. On the inside, oh, no, it's not too bad. A little bit more early on. So will begin to get a bit of a feel for this. I thought it'd be quite difficult actually lining everything up, but it's not too bad. That's all within a millimetre or so now. I will just try and do a bit more work down this other end. But I think a little tiny bit of tweaking. But that is very, very close to being where I want it. Well, I'm back in the woodshed at the moment and I'm just making the wooden base bits for this. So I'll just show you what I'm sort of doing. So I'm making the back spine piece of wood and the wood filler for this shape. So I'll cut that out for the top board and then I'm using a nasty scrappy bit of MDF. I hate MDF. Lung killing stuff. But I've got a bit here out of a skip somewhere so I will use that two halves of it will do for the filler. So I'll cut those out on the bandsaw. I hate sandpaper and I hate MDF, <laughs> but tonight I'm using it. <laughs> I've now bent the steel wool die and I'm just going to try it on this mould that I've made. So yeah, it's not bad actually. It's not perfect. <laughs> it's life ever. <laughs> it's not bad. So that, that broadly supports. So what I've done, I've got this wall of MDF to support the steel wall die. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the excess steel wall die off and then I'm going to screw the steel wall die to the MDF. Uh, oh, before I do that, I mustn't forget, I want to weld. So I'm going to cut the join and then put a little spot weld on just to hold it there. So that's what's happening next. So I'll just mark this for doing the cut. So as long as I cut that side of the line, I'll be all right. So I'm going to cut this down here. And that gets the excess steel wheel die off. I'll check that again against the mould. And yeah, they'll join fine. So if I do a little spot weld on those next. Having got it all ready for the welding, I actually thought it was probably better that I punched the holes for the screws first, because they'll be quite sort of shock making. So I'll use my Whitworth punch. I'll pop the film up on using this and um, punch a few holes. Get into a bit of a rhythm. Once you don't want one or two, actually, it does get easier. It's not too bad. Minimum power. Slow the feed down. This isn't so successful. I'm just popping some little brass screws through the holes in the side. So these will anchor the cutting blade down. So I'm literally just popping them in the side holes. My weld was a bit of a disaster. So um, what I've done, I've actually put gaffer tape across the weld area. It's a bit of a bodge, but it will hold it. And these screws will also hold it. So I think that's okay. I will need to try and perfect the welding side of it a bit more. 
So if that's what I'm doing there, just popping little brass screws in all around. And um, that's my gaffer tape. <laughs> anyway, I'll keep going. There you are, one clicker die. And I've put quite a few little brass screws around the edge to hold that. So I think the time's come to test it out and I'll try cutting a bit of leather to see if I can make a bag base out of it. Um, I'm going to use my homemade press as well for doing this and <laughs> we'll see if it works. This is going to be too large for my press so it's going to have to sort of move it across the pattern as you, you know, press down and it'll take three or four goes I think so time will tell how successful but it's worth a go at least when I know. So just going to now try it out. I've put the clicker cutter here, a piece of leather here and it's all supported by a bit of cutting board. So I'll press down. Now, I'm not expecting this to work. Well, I can hear that plywood groaning a bit. Gosh, I think this is going to be too thin, this plywood. Let's see what I will do. I'll bulk it up with another cutting mat if I've got space just. I can still hear that plywood moving. <laughs> <laughs> it is going through, having said that. I will go and get some more wood. Right, I'm going to try this now with another sheet of plywood on top to try and spread the, the force. Yep, that's definitely cutting. see I need a little bit of practice to sort out how to do this. I think I've probably gone in far too deep. The front edge isn't fully cut having said that. Let's turn it all around. It's a bit difficult to see. I think that is, yeah it's nearly there actually. Just a little bit down here. I've got a camera a bit in my way so I'm not that's in. I'm not going quite the leverage. I think that's done it actually, I'm going to do a little bit more. Yeah, well let's have a look. The moment of truth. Has this worked? So not, oh, pretty well through actually. Yeah, has actually. Little, that's the join, that's the, okay, and it's not gone quite just fair. Right, that. Not obvious from there. Sod, it's just missed out this little bit here. I will look more closely in a minute. There we are. And where I had the two blades joining. Well, I tried to weld. Right, there you are. One bag base. Now I think what I'll do, this is all a learning experience, but it has cut the hole in quite quite a thick bit of nice high quality calf leather. So I'm actually quite, quite pleased with that all in all. It needs a little bit of modification. I need to make it basically stiffer on the back here. But look, a perfectly cut out piece. In fact, once I get a little bit more practice, that would be so much quicker if you want to run out five of these, boom, 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 in about three or four minutes, I'll get five. And the beauty of this approach is once you've set it up, it's really accurate because every time I'll get a completely repeatable shape, which is superb. So if I was making a bag, my next job will be put this through the skyver to take the seam down a bit and lighten it up. But no, that's good. So there you are. Proof of the pudding, a little bit tortured. <laughs> Homemade clicker dies can be made to work. And it's a bit of a faff, but um, I think it's worth the effort. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.